All right, so we are towards the business end of elections 2019. Today is the seventh of the final phase of polling, which is presently underway. Polling started at 7 o'clock this morning. So stay tuned to Vyond World is One throughout the day, as we will be joined by a panel of experts throughout the day, where we'll be discussing and also analyzing as to how the seven phases of polling have in fact gone through and as to how each party is likely to have fared. So 59 constituencies, seven states in one union territory with 918 candidates in the fray. The seventh in the final phase of Indian elections has now begun. Now let's also take a look at the voter turnout till about 9.45 a.m. Bihar recorded a voter turnout of about 10.65%. Himachal Pradesh recorded a voter turnout of about 8.80%. Madhya Pradesh was marginally higher at 13.17%. Punjab at 9.84%, Uttar Pradesh recorded a voter turnout of 9.67% and as always it is West Bengal that is leading the pack with a voter turnout of about 14.22% and Jharkhand this time round seems to have pipped Bengal and it has recorded a voter turnout of 15% while the Union Territory of Chandigarh has recorded a voter per turnout of 10.40%. But the most keenly watched battle is, of course, playing out in Varanasi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the man who's been leading the BJP's charge, is, of course, contesting from here for a second time in what many say will again be a bit of a one-sided affair. Now, against him is, of course, Ajay Rai, who's been fielded by the Congress. Shalini Yadav of the Samajwadi Party is another important candidate. Remember, the Samajwadi Party had actually tried to replace Shalini Yadav with a former paramilitary personnel, Tej Bahadur Yadav, who, remember, had come out and said that the conditions of his service are not that great. He had therefore been sacked from his service. However, his nomination papers were rejected pretty much at the last minute. In 2014, Narendra Modi had won by a margin of nearly about 4 lakh votes. And at that time, he had pipped Ajay Rai and the other important contender back in 2014 had been Arvind K. Driwal, who had fought against Narendra Modi. And also earlier in the day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited the Kedarnath Shrine this morning. He had reached Kedarnath yesterday and had also meditated in a cave overnight, the pictures of which were splashed all over the media. He offered prayers at the shrine. He stepped out of the cave this morning and again offered prayers at the Badrinath Shrine. Now, Modi, remember, is in fact on a two-day visit of the twin towns of Kedarnath and Badrinath. A lot of people had raised questions on whether this is a violation of the Model Code of Conduct. But the Prime Minister has got prior permission from the Election Commission of India, which has actually given this permission for the Prime Minister to, in fact, visit the shrines of Kedarnath and Badrinath, considering the fact that the Prime Minister, if he were to visit any shrine, would, of course, draw a lot of media attention. This also is the day, remember, where his own constituency of Varanasi is, in fact, voting to elect its candidate. I am also a member of you, because I know that the people who are working in the election, how much pressure is there, and how much physical strain is there. और मई जून के चुनाव याने तो अपने आप में बड़े कठिन होते हैं उसके बावजूद भी आप लोग समय निकाल करके यहां पहुंचे आपके माध्यम से उत्तराखंड को और केदारनाथ को जरूर लाभ होगा कि लोगों को विश्वास बढ़ेगा भी आप केदारनाथ में उस आपदा के बाद काफी व्यवस्थाएं हो गई हैं आप आराम से जा सकते हैं कुछ समय यहां बिता सकते हैं तो एक प्रकार से आपके यहां आने से उत्तराखंड को लाभ हुआ है उनके यात्रा विकास को लाभ हुआ है और देशवासियों को भी लाभ हुआ है आपके आने के कारण क्योंकि ये खबरें पहुंचेगी तो लोगों को लगेगा चलो भाई इस बार छुट्टियों में दुबई सिंगापुर के बजाय केदारनाथ चले जाए all right, so that was India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi there at the Kedar North Rhine. Remember, he'd in fact been meditating and throughout the night, and he of course stepped out. Uh, earlier this morning and it was after that that he in fact spoken with the media personnel then. And also to discuss more on this, we are joined in by Mr. Arun Anand, who is a senior journalist who is joining us live from New Delhi. Good morning to you, Mr. Anand. You know, let me in fact begin by asking you this. A lot of people have, of course, raised questions on whether the model code of conduct was violated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi visiting the Kedarnath and the Badrinath shrines today. What is your take on this, although considering the fact that the Election Commission has already granted special permission to the Prime Minister? 
I think uh, it should not be seen as a violation of code of conduct. Uh, he is uh, the Prime Minister of the country. He has already taken the permission from uh, Election Commission. And uh, of course, the opposition is bound to raise uh, 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 the, uh, such points. But I don't know. I, I think his visit, how it is going to benefit the BJP or uh, in the seventh phase, I don't think uh, the election campaigning is over. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are already going into the last phase of the polls. Uh, we are almost like basically the first half has gone. So I don't think it is going to make a major impact. But uh, the point which I want to make is, Saleh is mm -hmm. here is that uh, Narendra Modi uh, is different from Vajpayee in this context that he appears to be an unapologetic Hindu. Mm -hmm. And he do doesn't mind wearing the Hindutva card up on his sleeve. So I think if you ha you'll have to look at this thing uh, from the politics which Narendra Modi pursues. Right. And uh, Hindutva is a core part of that. So his visit should be seen in that context, in the in, in a larger context, I would say. I think that's that's an interesting point that you make. We'll be discussing all of this, but also what are the states...